Hey man, it's so good to be in here again. Oh my gosh. We have the AC just getting us little goosebumps and stuff. Last Wednesday, I think it was so cold. It was like 68 degrees. I seen everyone all eskimo up and fish had to tell them to turn off the AC. We got, we were so hyped up for being back in here. But you know what, guys, um, Pastor Ed, he just, I don't know if you guys got to see all that video, but I just want to highlight that video that he had. Um, so if we could just, um, while they're going around and, and, and receiving tithes from you guys, thank you guys so much for giving for all those that actually attend church, attend First Love, and, and this, is, this is home base. Thank you guys for all your helps. Um, we have a lot of things going on. Um, painting, painting projects. Hopefully we're going to paint the sanctu- sanctuary before maybe John gets back. Hopefully we could let him come back in with, the, with the new fresh breath and all that. But thank you for your tithes and offerings, guys. Um, but let's cut, that la- let's cut that back light and let's just run that, that video back, guys. I want you guys to see that and focus on it. Yeah, that's an amazing video. Pastor Ed, oh my gosh, he's so good at what he does. Uh, I wish I had that just ability to be able to make montages and videos and all that. I, I can't do it yet, but I'm, I'm going to try. But if any, any young ones or anyone has any desire to learn that or to, you know, do anything, what, a little bit of what Ed does, like this type of stuff, he is the guy you want to talk to. We, we, need, we need help. We need help in so many areas, but, but this looks like a fun one. This looks like a, it's a cool one here. Like you guys could, I mean, that, that right there, it go, I wanted to play it again because it goes along with what we're going to be hearing today. And um, oh gosh, the visuals of, of, of what it is. I think I want him to just send me that video so I could just watch it in the morning and I could say, okay, now I know what to pray for, all these different cool things. But, but it's a really great video. Thank you so much, Pastor. Give him a hand, guys, because he does a great job. And um, so now that we've got through all the, all the other stuff, um, go ahead and get your Bibles out. If they're a little cold, we want to get them all warmed up. If you guys haven't already cracked them open and turned the pages this morning, we're going to jump into it. But uh, what we're uh, talking about today is we're talking about things that are very common to us, things that we've all been through. And uh, we're going to talk about glorifying God. Yeah, the high schoolers and junior hires. Junior hires and high school are combined. Actually, I, got, I had to be edified on that part because I thought, oh, maybe not. But high school, middle schoolers all together in the collective with Rich and Melissa. It's going to be a great study and teaching, guys. Go do it. Today's, um, today's message, the title of the study would be Glorifying God Through Worry, Fear, and Anxiety. Does is anyone here, is anyone here, um, how, many, how many of you here uh, could say that uh, you have maybe one of the three, worry, fear, or anxiety? All hands go up. That's pretty much any, all hands probably go up, or all, everyone's experienced it at one time, and it's, um, 
Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's just one of those things that we come to know. There's so many things as we were watching that video. There's so many things to, to like is like divided. They show the picture of the White House and says we're, we're divided, and it's like it's there's a, there's so many things, and it's it's true. It's like we are one nation, and we are under God. We are one world under God. But whether people realize it or not, and they have that revelation or not, that's the truth. But the unity is not there as much as God would want us to be unified and and together as a family, just full-on family, you know, women, children, orphans, homeless, you know, the elderly, the widows, widowers, all these things. We're all, we should all be together helping each other. And if we did it right, and if our love was right, then well, we wouldn't need police, and we wouldn't need judges and all these things. We wouldn't need kings or presidents because God would be enough, and if we all had an understanding of who he is. But, but guys, I'll tell you... Um, Fear, I don't have a whole lot of fear, personally. We're all wired differently. Um, I've had it, you know, I've had it for sure. Um, you feel the hairs in the back of your neck stand up, or there's been times where I've just been, like, stuck, got caught, you know. Um, I've experienced it. I don't deal with it so much now. Uh, or uh, anxiety doesn't really, you know, stump me or stagger me so much personally, just sharing with you guys, but worrying, that would be a sin of mine. Uh, I, I, do, I do fall into worry from time to time. And, you know, you know I, 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 ha I know that we all are, like, we all could, uh, what do you say, we all are, it's also common to us, we could all um, relate. I'm trying to find these words and they're not coming so quick. But we could all relate to these things. And, and we are human. So, what is it? Like, in this humanity, in, this, in these desperately wicked hearts, in these minds that are trying to, you know, put everything together, it's common. It's a common thing for us to worry, for sure. Usually, we're worrying about the things that are unknown. The more we know about something, the more we're going to be confident about something, right? Um, if we knew, uh, we, we, well, God's plan, it's, it's, all, it's here. This is God's plan, right? We know God's plan if we, if we read it. We get comforted, we get, uh, we get assured, we get reassured, and we know his plans. So because I know his plans, I don't get anxious about things that come or have big fears, especially fears. But, but the day-to-day -day stuff, I, I, sometimes the worry is there. It's just like, oh, gosh, there's too, like I said, there's just so much to worry about. But our uncertainty is, is that's where we get our hang-ups. That's where I get my hang-ups. But... There's always something to be uncertain about, tr truly. Uh, if we all truly just, we could just, we just face it, face it. We all can agree that when we, we look out into our world and we take our, you know, our, our optimistic lenses off, you know, that we, we recognize, as we've seen, we have a crazy, we have a pretty crazy world. We do, truly do. But... Um, it's not out of the ordinary because it's for good reasons, right? We see things burning. I mean, burning churches, burning police buildings down, all these types of things. It's like, you know, people just, you've seen the, some, sometimes when we look out at the news alone, you know, I don't actually have the, I have like, you know, the Netflix and National Geographic, Disney Plus, that type of stuff. I don't see the news all the time, but I have to, you, we have to have an ear and an eye to the news and um, when we see the news, we see all the, all the garbage that's going on out there. And, um, and this could add. This could add to our worries and stuff. Sometimes I know some people that are just like, no, we just don't watch the, we just don't watch the news because it, it'll mess you up. And for some people it really does, but for, for a wise man, for a wise woman, we have, to, we have to know what's out there. It's like we have to know what's going on to some extent. And we have to kind of... Um, I was sharing, me and my me and brother, we, we, we fellowship with a lot of you guys, um, but one of the brothers like, it's like we're putting these puzzle pieces together as they come, you know? Not everything's all, we can't take it for, you know, rock hard truth, but we have to kind of put these puzzle pieces together, and we have to know what's out there. We have to know what's around us. We have to be vigilant and watchful. But we, we, we get fearful, we get worried, we get anxious, um, perhaps very often for some of you, but, but for good reason, because we deal with death. You know, I had... This last month, now we're in July now, this last month, with this last month, there's three deaths that I dealt with. We all know one big, big death, John's best friend, John's wife, right, Maureen. 
Um, but she did it. She made it. Give her a hand. Like she made it all the way through, and she finished. She finished well. I lost my best friend, and um, and also we know um, my best friend. 16 years, I lost him, and it broke my heart. It crushed me. And then we have Clayton, our brother named Clayton. He passed away, and for him it was just like kind of more sudden. It's just sudden, you know. It's like he went and it was cancer. Cancer got him, and and he just he just he faded out like that fast. It's probably it was better than suffering, you know. But but he that's three deaths quick. So we have death, man. We have we have disease. We have crime. We have violence. All these some of, on the video what we've seen on the news what we see. We have terrorism. We have so many human divisions. We have viruses viruses that are blown way out of proportion to, for control and power, what I'm coming to see. But we, we have to obviously be aware of it, too. And we have to take it serious, too. That's why we have, we're taking temperatures and trying to protect you guys and the sanitation, sta- uh, sanitation stations and all that stuff. But, but some things are blown way out of proportion. It's just a lot of weird stuff going on. But what's not weird and what's awesome and good and, just, and, and what we ought to focus is on uh, right here is the Word of God, right? Um, and that, that should be able to, for the most part, it should be able to stabilize us. But the uncertainty out here, the uh, unemployment, the economic, uh, if you guys, anybody does stocks and we see it like just crazy peaks and crazy lows and just downs, I mean, it, it'll mess you up. When you lose your job, it's like, man, you have the, the bills to pay, you have your mortgages, your rent, and you, you know, you have husband, you know, your husband, your husband, you have your wife to take care of, you have your children to take care of, money, money is, just, it'll, it'll, it'll mess you up when you know that money's not coming in, you know, we shouldn't let it lord over us, we, you know, it's, the, it's for the love of money that is the root of all evil. It's not, money's not bad. It's just, it's a really great, tremendous blessing if we use it for the right things. But, but when we don't have it, we, we're, that's what we're used to. That what, what, that's what gives us a comfortable um, life and, and, you know, meets our needs. This is a big thing. When we don't have it, it, it messes us up. I've been there. Um, but we, yeah, like it says right here, I have in my notes, we could be wor- or worried and fearful of our, of our children and family's future. And the list goes on and on. I mean, just the other day for myself and myself and my wife, like there was something that came up and it was, I, I called John, um, or I didn't call him. I had a text and my phone was out, so it was weird. It, there was an iPhone malfunction, but I, I had to, I got a hold of him. I said, hey, John, you know, Alex, man, she's, uh, she was having cramps one day and they said maybe dehydration. And then it kind of cramps went on into the next day. And then she went to the hospital the second day, and it turns out that, that she was having actual contractions. She's 22 weeks right here this week. This Friday would be 23. So she was having contractions at 22 weeks. That's just a handful of months. It's way too early. So it would have been a, pre, it would have been a premature labor. And 22 weeks, a child's not, the, the chance for survival is super low. It's super low. It's, it's, the fatality rate is so high. So... She went in there, and um, I can't go in there. So she's there, and, she's, and I, I'm just wondering, how are you doing? So I have to face, Facebook FaceTime her, and then she's telling me this stuff, and I'm just like, what the heck? I goes, and, and I have to talk to her and talk her through it because she, she felt some type of way. I, I actually, actually have to ask her, like, how did you actually feel? What was going through your head? I know she had tears. She was, she was shaking and probably broken for a second. I have to ask her, too, when I get home, shame on me, because I got I to gotta know, because I got to know how I, I need to pour into my wife. So sometimes we need to be sensitive to others, and how are we going to, how are we going to um, help mature and grow and bring others to completeness around us, especially our wives, our husbands, our children, just friends, just everyone, just the, the, the family, the, the God's creation around us, humans. I have to, I have to, I have to ask her, but you know what? She got through it, and she's better now. I mean, she's, she had like maybe two contractions yesterday, or maybe cramps. I think we're thinking they're contractions now, but, but it was better. She's been hydrating in bed rest, right? So it's been really good. But not to be too much into my life or to get stuck on that. But, but when she was there, she felt it. And I don't know if it was worry, fear, or anxiety of the unknown, the uncertainty, because, you know, things were going on with her cervix, too. So we're, it, it could have happened. It didn't. God... God knew. I put my trust in God. I wasn't worried, but I was definitely concerned. And that's kind of maybe could be close. But, but this worry, the fear, the anxiety, and all these feelings and emotions, they could really truly be paralyzing to a person. Really can. Um, and you guys probably know. You guys probably know just as well as I do. 
Um, it could be paralyzing enough to control our decisions and a lot of what we do. You know, but, but what, what does a person, what, does, what, does, what do we as, as, as human beings, as Christians primarily, as believers, what do we do in these times where we feel paralyzed, in these times where we feel like alone or just completely broken and we have no hope? What, what do we do when the, in these times when we're right in the midst of it and we're suicidal? Have you, ever, have you ever been suicidal? You don't have to raise your hand, but think, you, you, know, you know who you are. And I, I'm one of them. I'll raise my hand because I had that thought when I was like in junior high. What's up with that? Wh- where did I learn that thought? Was it movies? Or, I don't know. But, but I had those thoughts. Didn't, my thoughts weren't too heavy. I wasn't too, um, I wasn't too, I guess, um, I wasn't too hit with, hit with it too hard. But it actually crossed my mind. But look, you got your Bibles open. I hope you guys have a pen or a pencil. Um, pull them out. And um, we're going to actually, there's, there's, one, there's two passages I want you to note down. And, and you guys, I want you guys, for all you note takers, take these notes. Because why? Because if you're not dealing with these things, there's guarantee there's probably, out of 10 people, there's probably, you know, at least the high majority, like 7 to seven to. I don't know, nine people that are probably dealing with it around you. So you could help them in, in the times of need when, when they're going through hard times and hardships. So first, first uh, passage I would like you to write down in Scripture would be Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. You could just note that one down. This, the passage I want you to turn to is in, in the book of Luke. It's uh, chapter 5, verse 17, 17 through 25. And I'll read that one for you guys. And I want you to just note them both because they're both about the same thing. They're both uh, accounting the same time in history, the same, the same historical moment. And um, so when you guys go home, and I want you guys to, you know, do your homework, and, and I want you guys to remember. I, I don't want you to just be in one ear right out the other. I want you guys to be right here because this is study. You guys are in Bible, Bible college right now. This is how it is. This is a st- study of eternity, study of the now, and study of the later. And, and, you know, this is, this is something that we got. We have to have it st- strong in our minds because this is going to, it's, it's always helpful. It's always edifying for the correction and reproof of all of us and, you know, the others that are, that are actually needing. So in the uh, book of Luke 5, 17 through 25, as, as it's up here, we'll, we'll read through. Uh, as Jesus was in Capernaum, he was doing what he does best, right? He was showing uh, just all those that he knew all those that he came across, he was showing them how to love. He was schooling them and teaching them, um, teaching, teaching the people uh, and all those that were in need. He was teaching those people um, the, the living word of God. He was also teaching some Pharisees. If you guys, if anyone's fresh or new here, I mean, Pharisees, um, I'm going to tell you, I, I just looked it up, the basic Siri definition. Hey, Siri, what is the definition? My phone's, someone's phone's going to go off right now if I say it right. Just ask her, what's the, def- what's the definition of Pharisee? Which I know, but I just wanted to kind of bring it to you guys. He's teaching these regular people, people that were in need, and these Pharisees, the teachers of the law. It says a Pharisee is a member of the ancient, ancient Jewish sect, meaning religion or faith, member of the ancient Jewish sect, uh, distinguished by strict observance of traditional and written law. So, right, so the law of the land and the laws of God. And commonly they held to have, uh, they were held to have pretensions uh, to superior sanctity. So they, they you know, as, as we're supposed to, be, you know, be abiding and, and, you know, being at peace with um, our brothers, our just people in the world and obeying the law, well, they're, they did, and they also, they adhered to God's law, the old, old covenant, Levitical law, and you know, all these um, strict laws. And um, so they thought they were, they thought they were real good. They thought they were really good, but they missed Jesus. They missed, they missed God uh, in the, you know, right before them in the flesh. They missed him. They missed him, and they totally, in their, in their superiority complex, they, they, just, they just missed it. But let's, let me read it for you here. Let me throw these glasses on here because, okay, Luke chapter 5, 17. It says, here it goes. It says, now it happened on a certain day. As he was teaching, that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by. 
who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men, then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, who they sought to bring in and lay before him. So they, they wanted to bring this, their friend before him, but they couldn't even get in because it was a packed house, right? So just imagine if, if Jesus was up here and, and every seat was full and, and just shoulder to shoulder, like, uh, like, like we, were, we were here, packed house, but the, but the sanctuary doors were full too, so they, they couldn't even stand at the door. That's how, that's how full it was. Is that, and that's why I told you to look right down Mark, so you could, you could catch the extras. You could look at the extras, the harmonization of the Gospels, right? So... It was very, very packed. They wanted to lay, lay uh, the, their friend before him, verse 19, and, and when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, they went on the housetop and they let him down in his bed through the tiling, through the tiling in the roof in, in the midst before Jesus. Okay, so when he saw their faith, he said, he said to him, Man, your sins are forgiven you. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this? Who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, he says, why are you reasoning? Why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say? Your sins are forgiven you? Or to say, rise up and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, Arise, take up your bed, and go to your house. Immediately he rose up, no longer paralyzed, healed, forgiven. How awesome would that have felt? When I was set free from God, I felt, so, I felt, man, so set free. That was the, big, the greatest feeling I have, so set free. But then, then you're paralyzed, you know, for however long in your life. You got double time? Wow, that's double blessings for sure. Immediately he rose up before them. He took up what he had been laying on and departed to his house, glorifying God. <laughs> Rightly so. And they were all amazed and, and they glorified God and were filled, they were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. It's, it's interesting that they, had, they were of, they were full of fear because it's like, man, you see such a good work, and, and it, it scared them. That's the, the unknown, the uncertainty, the fear, right? Well, as Jesus was teaching those at that moment, all those that had hardened skeptical hearts, the keys to this passage are faith, you can note, faith, forgiveness, his deity, the miracle, and the glorifying of God. So, in this, the forgiveness of your sins is the single most important thing in life through Jesus. The knowledge of the complete and supernatural, for, uh, the knowledge of complete supernatural forgiveness and recognition that God only can forgive and that Jesus is God. Isn't that, isn't that, it's, it's, these, these guys that follow the law, these scribes and these Pharisees that are just like, all God, all God, never seen, never seen them. But they, they hear the stories, right? All these stories in the Old Testament on the, on the scrolls, they never seen them. When they see them, they're just like, no, this is a man, right? They're, they're looking, and looking at Jesus and looking at the outward appearance, and he probably looked, you know, he did, probably didn't look like anything, you know, all too beautiful, pretty, and, you know, uh, majestic, but... They seen him, and, and they were looking at the outward appearance. They, they, didn't, they didn't know his heart, but God knew their hearts. John 
chapter 14, 7 through 9, okay? Before we get so break, it, break it down even more, we're going to look at this. And we're going to look at Jesus. Because anytime I have a chance to talk about Jesus and, 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 and him revealing things, like, you know, that they recognize this thing and they recognize that God was forgiving sins, they're just like, what's going on? We're gonna, I want to I spend a moment to, to, to talk about our awesome, our awesome God. In John uh, 14, 7 through 9, he reveals keys, keys to the wisdom and understanding of God. Okay? And uh, the thing is, the thing is, oh, look at that. See, the wheat. As we were wheat and tear, we got to get the wheat to the threshy floor. That's what our job is to do. Get those people out there to the threshy floor and let, let God sort them out to who's going to come and be in heaven and who's not. But anyways, okay. The, things, the thing is about this little passage and this little portion of Scripture, the thing is we don't have to be like Philip. Right here, we're going to read a little, little verse. And, and Philip, he didn't, he, didn't really, he didn't get it either. He didn't know. He didn't have the, the full revelation at the moment, at that time. But we don't have to be like Philip because it has been proclaimed for us that Jesus is Lord and God. If we know Jesus, we know God, our Father. And if we've seen Jesus here in Scripture and even glimpses of him in each other, then, then we see our Father. So watch, look. Jesus is in all of you guys. I got to see the Jesus in you guys and not just the, the, the fleshly man or woman or the, the carnal man or woman or the, or the demon that's, you know, working through us or whatever the heck. I got to look for the Jesus in you because I think that's what God ultimately is looking at us at the end of life, right? He's looking for Jesus in us. And if Jesus is upon us and over us, well, then you, you, you're with me, you know? So we search in hearts. We should, we should be sensitive to those around us and know that Jesus created all of us, and we, there's, there's bits of him in, in, in all, of, all of us. But um, we, Jesus was revealing himself as God and our Father, okay? So I'm going to read, read it for you guys. John 14, 7 through 9. It says, if you, ha- if you had known me, you would have known my Father also. If, you, if we take the time, if we take the time to, to, to know Jesus, if we take the time to, to open this book up, and we take the time to focus and, and just shut out all the, all the distortion, the noise, and all the news, and all the, all the bad stuff, and we take our time to be present and get in his presence, he'll meet us. And, he'll, and we'll know him. Because every man, every, every person wants to know his father or his mother. Even if they abandon them, they still go through life when they're 18, 20s, mid-20s, whatever. They still wonder, like, who was my mom? Who was my dad? God knows and he wants to reveal himself to all of you, all of us, all the time. And to a greater, greater level, magnify himself to your mind and to your heart. If you, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Verse 8 is where Philip comes in. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father, and it is sufficient for us. And Jesus replies, have I been with you so long, and have you not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the father so how could you say, show us the Father? He's, he's saying, he's trying to relate to him that, man, you, you're, I'm he. I am that I am, man. Jesus through scripture was revealing to people he is God. And for this reason, the scribes, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the, they, they wanted to stone him and kill him. But, and they, 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 they were successful. They were successful but unsuccessful. They killed the body, but no, they didn't. He didn't stay down, and nor will you. If you, come to, if, you come to, if you come to have that relationship with him, if you come to truly, as it says, know him. But looking back into Luke, by faith, Jesus cured the man's sins and his paralysis. He killed, cured the man's sins and his paralysis with the quickness, even through a rude um, interruption of his own teaching, right? Jesus was a multitasker, right? And he still is, right? He's, he's three, some of his attributes, what are these? Uh, omnipotent, 
omniscient, knowing all, omnipotent, all powerful, om, om, omniscient, knowing all, and then um, omnipresent, right, everywhere. So he's multitasking still to this day, all day. He's, he's speaking to your mind and your heart in just the right way, and you're, you're, keying, you're keying in on certain, um, certain things here, and you're going to take them with you. But he's, he's a multitasker. He got interrupted in the middle of something very important. So if someone came in and interrupted everything, I'd probably maybe I'd, I'd, it'd get my attention. It'd throw me off a little bit. Maybe I'd be like, come on, guys, quiet them down, and let's just focus, you know. But he just, he, he, he didn't let it phase him. So if, if they rudely interrupted this packed house and, and just busted through the roof right here, and Jesus just didn't really even, didn't really get shaken, he just kept going. If he can get rudely interrupted like that, and I mean, it wasn't rudely. It actually, it was a faithful interruption. He got faithfully interrupted. But if he could do that, then, then he could do that now. So we could come to him at any time in our in our. In our, in our failures, in our um, hardships, in our, in our desperate need, we can come to him no matter what's going on. I mean, as he's, come, as he's cracking the clouds and coming down on a white horse, right then, boom, we could come to him. He's doing a, a big thing. When he comes back, he's going to be doing a big thing, but you can come to him right then. And he'll, 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 he'll stop and he'll let that miracle happen for you. He'll, he'll, he'll let you accept him and he'll be you. He'll be with you. We can come to him. At, we can come to him through prayer for any thing at any time. Thing is, Jesus, he just flexed. He was flexible. He flexed and he took great advantage of the miraculous opportunity within the interruption to heal the man of his, of his numbness and his incapacit- incapacitation. Also, also his, he forgave him, right? He also forgave him of the sin. So he forgave him, and he also healed him of his numbness and incapacitation. But what about us? What about us? Do we have great faith to trust, to trust God and to, to allow him to have complete control, complete control of your life? No matter what the, the outcome or the current situation um, how do we relinquish control? It's, it's hard. It's like we want to be in control of everything, right? We want to be in control of everything, but we're in control of nothing. Not even, we can barely control ourselves, right? And that's what we do. That's it. You jump in your car, you could maybe put the radio station on, but then oh, here comes the static. It's like, dang, when I was just vibing, you know, it's like. But, um, yeah, we want to be in control of everything, but we're in control of nothing. And it's so much more peaceful to us as believers to just not, um, not have complete control. But no matter what the outcomes, you know, we got to trust God. All things work together for the good of those who loves him, love him in Romans 8, 28. Okay? My gosh, time has flown, huh? Wow. Okay, I'm going I'm to fly. Okay, but have you ever wondered why, where you learn to be so worried, like, worry so good and be so fearful and, and, and be so anxious? Have you ever wondered that? Like, how did that, where did that even come about? We look at it other people and we see other people doing it and we think like, oh man, maybe we should be concerned for what they're worried about. And it's like, it's weird. We, we learn it when we're really young. It's wild and crazy. When do we get so good at doing what God doesn't want us to do? Matthew 6, 25. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go so quick, guys, because we only got a few minutes. Matthew 6, 25, it says, therefore, I say, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your life. What? Like, literally, don't worry about your life. And I was sitting there in bed the other day, I was thinking, I was like, man, I was thinking, maybe worry would be like, it could, you could learn something through it. Or, no, don't worry at all. He don't want you to worry at all. Matthew 6, 31, 34, or no, Matthew 6, 27. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? No, it's going to take away. It's going to take away. It's going to steal your peace of mind. It's going to just, it's going to grip you and, and keep, hold you in its grasp and have you just stuck. Matthew 6, 31, 34. Through 34. So don't worry about these things saying, what will I eat? What will I drink? What will I wear? These things dominate thought, the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father knows all your needs. So just seek first the kingdom of God above everything else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need, not just some things, everything, all things, and heaven, and eternity. 34, so don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's troubles are enough for today. So aren't these great verses for a person that suffers from severe anxiety? It's like, no, that's, that's all I got to do. Just not worry, right? While we read it, the, like, someone, someone that has it, has it bad, 
they look at that and they're like, okay, well, don't worry, huh? That's easy to say. That's easy to read. But we read it like, shoot, that. If, so that's the answer I've been looking for all my life. No pills, no medicine, no breathing techniques. God says to, through Luke and, or through Matthew and Pastor Sean, just when you worry, the cure is just don't worry. That's easy enough to say for the person with the extreme anxiety, right? And fear and um, just worry and depression. Maybe for some traumatic, exp uh, traumatic experience which caused you PTSD and, 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 and you have several triggers of it all. Um, that person saying, okay, well, I just won't worry now. I won't worry. I won't be anxious. I'll just turn off what I could never turn off. Well, it's a challenge, right? It's not easy. If you guys have been dealing with it, you guys have been still, it's a constant battle and you guys still have to, have to check it. Well, it might seem like Bible talk that doesn't do much good for you, but this is the great and true way of God our Father. Sometimes people read and know the word and, could, and still can't turn these things off. They just, it's just they can't do it. So, but it's not for you to do. You, you, you approach it and you try, but, but God's going to do it. You got to let God do it. You got to give him com com complete control. You got to surrender. So when we read these words of life out of the Bible, we begin to absorb the truth that God has provided for us. And we pray them out loud over and over and over again. And they are from, and, and there will be, they, they will get familiar, familiar enough so that they will stand in the place of the negative effects in your life. And our minds begin to be washed clean as we battle through all of our PTSDs and triggers. Change does happen when you believe. Look at what it says in 2 Corinthians 5.17. It says, therefore, if, it's, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new. Can we surrender? Can we give God, can we give God control so that he could renew our minds and he could, he could set us free from some of these things? We need to. Romans 12, 2, it says, And do not be conformed to this world. The world may worry. The world, all, all, all types of ways. But let us not be conformed to the world, but be transformed. Again, be transformed. Be renewed. By the, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is, uh, you may prove what is um, good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. Anxiousness and worry will begin to decrease and depression will weaken its grip. Confidence in Christ will, it, it will consume the suicide. All these emotions and thoughts could sometimes still be with us. They really, they, they can. Even though we, we keep praying and we keep, we keep reading the word and we keep doing what we're supposed to be doing, they could still be with us. But, but, they won't control you. If you, you, you have to do your part too. You have to kind of approach things. You have to face some things sometimes. You know, and stop what you're doing. At the very beginning, what I did in my walk, I just stopped. And I'd be, I, there's, I had dealt with a lot of anger and stuff. So uh, when something wasn't going my way, like, or, or, or when I was bothered, I was like, Lord, just, Lord, just help me. Lord, I, and I'd just pray I'd immediately. Stop right there, right there as I was walking. Or, or I'd physically stop, and I'd just give it to him. I'd just give it to him. And it just, it just, it just works. But these detriments won't control you. And, and it's in their, in this paralyzing grip. It won't. God's, word, God's words are powerful, as it says in Luke 5.17. It says, the power of God, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. The power of the Lord, right? God has the power to create and destroy, to comfort and consume. Or he will allow things. He will allow certain lots and obstacles for growth, for self, and or for understanding for others. So that we may have compassion for them in their, in their struggles. But this Bible is not magical. It's not magical. This is not a magical book. It's not some fairy tale magic stuff right here. But this is the omnipotent, like I said, remember, all powerful, all powerful word of God. And it can rearrange the physics, the chemistry, and the atmosphere of this, of this world. It's not always easy, guys. We know. It oftentimes comes down to a choice. And you have to choose to, allow, to not allow your fear and anxiety to control your life. You have to choose to guard your heart and your mind. Also make the right choices to focus on what is true while approaching uncertainty or even in the midst or in the middle of, of these uncertain times. See, the thing about what these men did, these men of faith, 
they exercised their faith, but they had the faith to believe that Jesus would meet the, their paralyzed friend's need. Do, you ha- do we have that faith? Do you have that faith? The men did not just pray about it, right? They didn't just pray about it. They moved their feet, they moved their feet to action and they took a leap along with their prayer. They didn't let their difficult circumstance of not being able to get to him or their friend, you know, immobile, they didn't let that, the, the discourage, discouraging setback uh, control them. They worked together and courageously did something daring and different, and Jesus rewarded them. Okay? It was funny because I was doing this, and then Oswald Chambers, I got to get a little Oswald Chambers in there, and what he said, this is what he said, okay? He had something to say about, about, about fret, fretting. Fretting, fretting is like another word for worry, right? He starts off by sharing Psalms 37, verse 8. It's the second portion of it. It says just basically do not fret. It only causes harm. Fretting means we're out of joint mentally or spiritually. It is one thing to say do not fret, but something very different to have such a nature that you find yourself unable to fret. That's where we need to be. We, it, for, to the believer, we got to be the, at the point where it's like we, it's, we're even unable to worry because we have so much trust and faith in God that worry just does not touch us. But it's easy to say. He even, he even says, too, like I was talking about this person with severe anxiety, and they read these, like, oh, yeah, it's easy. Just read these scriptures and don't do it. Well, he had, he had some similar thing to say also. He said, it's easy to say, rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him until your own little world is turned upside down and we're forced to live in confusion and agony like so many other people. Is it possible not to fret, he says, and rest in the Lord? Well, he says it must work in our days of difficulty and uncertainty as well as our peaceful days or it will never work. Resting in the Lord is not dependent on your external circumstances at all, but on your relationship with God himself. Do you know God well enough to trust and just leap into his his total control? Our Lord never worried about what was... He never worried and was never anxious about anything because his purpose was never to accomplish his own purposes but only to fulfill the plans of God so fretting fretting arises out of it arises from our determination to have our own way and this is a hitter heavy hitter here he says have you been propping your foolish souls of have you been propping your foolish soul of yours with the idea that your circumstances are too much for God to handle He's like, gosh, that's a, that's a big one. Too. He says, set your opinions and speculations aside and abide under the shadow of the Almighty, which is in Psalms 91.1. Deliberately, he says, tell God that you will not fret about whatever concerns you. All, our, all of our fretting and worrying is caused by planning without God. So I say, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand, says in Isaiah 41.10. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you, Psalms 56.3. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your your request to God. And, And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Peace is what I leave with you. It's my own peace that I give to you. I don't give it as the world does. Do not be worried and upset. Do not be afraid, John 14, 27. For God has given us a spirit of, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and a sound mind, 2 Timothy Verse one, chapter 1, 7. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. Let's be made perfect in love. First John four eighteen. When anxiety was great in me, your consolation brought me brought joy to my soul in Psalm, Psalms ninety four nineteen. But now this is what the Lord says: Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name, and you are mine, Isaiah 43, 1. Continually pick yourself up no matter what area you fall in, guys. No matter if you fall a million times, pick yourself up until you get into the habit of putting God first, planning with him in mind. 
the only thing that will keep us from possibly worrying is to bring God in as the greatest factor in all of our planning, okay? So today, the God of the universe is calling you now. If you want to be at peace, if you want to be made perfect in love, if you want to be forgiven, and you want to just be healed of your, maybe your, you know, paralyzed state, I just ask you guys to just take that leap of faith, like these four men did, and put your feet to prayers, and do something daring for Jesus now. I ask you guys, if you guys want to, want to have that, that, all that, that goodness of God, then I ask you to just come, come, come on up here. And just accept the Lord. If anyone does not know the Lord, come on up and take that leap of faith. You could turn the lights off. You could turn the lights off. If, if anyone does not know Jesus and they want to have peace, they want to have that love, they want to have that setting free, come on up. If anybody needs to be reconciled, if anybody needs to, to be, you know, reset, restabilized, um, come on up. If no one does, that's okay. But if anyone's out there on, online, then just pray with me. I'm going to say this prayer. And we're also going to take communion after this. So anyone that's going to be doing communion, this is for, those, this is for the believer. This is not for the unbeliever. This is for the believer. So if you need to, I often do it all the time, even though I know that I know God. I still, I still ask for forgiveness and I repent. Just to repeat this prayer with me to reconcile your faith, with, to be one with God, or to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, we just thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for, for coming to earth to show us the way, for teaching us, for loving us, for forgiving us, for dying for us. I ask you, to be Lord of my life. I ask me to teach, you, teach, you, teach me your ways in your word. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins, my transgressions, my worrying, my anxiousness, my fear, my stubbornness, my pride for all of my junk. Forgive me now, Father. In Jesus' name I ask, and I pray. Amen. We'll be taking communion now. Does everybody have does everybody have their little elements there? Does every, if anyone doesn't have their communion, go ahead and raise your hand. No one? Okay, cool. What we'll do is um uh, Rob, can you or John, could you light one of these? Or light these candles up, please? Or somebody, I think the lighter's right here. And then uh, also, Raw, um, can you come up for prayer? Andrea, would you like to pray up here? Can you pray for, for if, their la- if their lady wants to maybe approach? And um, that's okay, that's good. And um, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and take communion now. Now we have the high school in here too. Perfect timing, okay? Perfect, perfect late, late, late timing. Okay, guys, we know what Jesus did. It, I think we all know because we're all sitting here. No one had to come to faith, you know, physically and to I. So I think we all know what Jesus did. He, he, he came, he, he, he decided to leave his perfect heavenly domain, put on flesh and walk amongst us as man, God in the flesh. He, he walked all through life. He showed us how to live. He showed us how to think. He showed us how to act.